Morning, everybody. Welcome to our online service. We are on location, I guess you could say today. We're down in San Mateo at San Mateo Church of God. My dad, Pastor Phil Wyatt, he has wanted to put together a service for his congregation. So Noah and I come down to help him. And so we decided just to merge our AM service this week. So I believe you're going to enjoy it. And as we enter into the house of God, it's the same as any other time we come together. We've come for the purpose of the Holy Ghost having his way. So let's step inside and let's have church. Thank you for being here with us this morning on this Sunday morning. We're going to pray and ask the Lord to help us as we sing for the glory of God and as we preach this gospel, we're going to pray for his anointing. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bow before you, ask you, God, to touch us and anoint us today. And I pray, God, that this word will go out and touch someone's heart today. Touch us as we sing for the glory of God and as we preach this gospel. We love you. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you got a book, turn to page 277 in your red back hymnal. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glad to have you with us, Middleburg, San Mateo. We're going to worship the Lord together today. I'm redeemed. Aren't you glad to be redeemed this morning? Thankful for the redeeming power of the Lamb. Praise thankful God. for His grace and His mercy. 
You know what happens to redeemed folks? One day they're going to be singing Heaven's Jubilee. Yeah. We're going to enter in to that place He's prepared for you and I. There's still a thing called the rapture church. And he said he's going to appear the second time to those that are looking for him. I don't know about you, but I'm looking for a soon appearing. So let's sing it together. Heaven's Jubilee. Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air. Coming after you and me, joy is ours to share. What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise. Heaven for that jubilee, hunger in the sky. across town and I pastor here we don't get a chance to uh, preach together and sing together we've sang this song many a time together it's a song that we love to sing when my savior reached down for me Savior reached 
lie waste. Now, therefore, saith the Lord of hosts, listen to what he's saying to the church, consider your ways. Ye have sown much, and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put into a bag with holes. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and, and, and build the house and I will take pleasure in it and, and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. And ye looked for much and lo, it came to little. And, and when ye brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why? Saith the Lord of hosts, because of mine house that is waste. And ye ran every man unto his own house. Therefore the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. And I called for a drought upon the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of his hands. This is a, a message of coming back from spiritual apathy. Haggai the prophet was a prophet of restoration. Unlike most of the prophets, Haggai had the joy of seeing positive results among God's people. There was a great revival, a spiritual awakening in his ministry. Haggai was sent by God to, to minister to the people that backslid because of spiritual apathy. The people followed the path of selfishness. That they put self first and self, instead of letting God uh, occupy the space uh, amen, that rightfully belongs to him. Listen, that they were more concerned about their own agenda. They were more concerned about their own things than about the things of God. The, the pursuit of material things calls them uh, to neglect the things of God. Uh, the more we put selfish ambition uh, and worldly ideas into our minds, the more we cloud up our sight of where God really wants us to be. Uh, the only way we can prevent this from happening, church, uh, it's simple. It's very simple. We need to be putting more of God in our lives uh, and less of this world. Uh, uh, the prophet Haggai said that we need to consider our ways. Can I tell you right now, church, uh, the time is now uh, for us to take seriously our relationship with God. Uh, the time is now for us to give ourselves uh, completely to God. It's not time to play games. Uh, it's time to get serious with God. Uh, the time is now for us to be a witness uh, for the Lord like we've never been before. Uh, it's time for us to rededicate our whole heart life uh, to the Lord. I believe that God has hit a reset button. Uh, I believe God put this message in my heart because uh, he loves this church. Uh, and it's his desire for each and every person uh, to live in victory. Uh, I believe he has planted us, uh, painted us a picture of apathy so we can consider the ways that we're going today. If you'll look at God's word and study God's word, uh, you'll find that it tells us that, the, that this falling away from God thing uh, was not unusual. Uh, we read about apathy all through the Bible. It happened over and over again, yet the, God still had mercy on the people of God. Uh, but I want to look at some of the signs of spiritual apathy this morning. Now that word apathy means uh, a lack of feeling. A lack of emotion, a lack of concern, or a lack of interest. Does that sound familiar to us today? The word consider means to think carefully about, or to reflect on, or to take into account. We need to take into account about four weeks ago what was going on. It didn't matter what you was doing when you came into the house of God. Did you have a desire even to come to the house of God? Or did somebody have to talk you into coming to church? 
Oh, that's one sign of apathy. Oh, one sign of apathy is when God's work is being neglected. We see that all the time. Now listen, after being invaded by Nebuchadnezzar, the city was destroyed, including the temple of God. As a result of God's people going their own way, they were taken prisoner and sent to Babylon for 70 long, miserable years. Oh, it was a great time of sorrow. Oh, they felt completely cut off from God. Hey, I want you to listen to what it sounds like. Look at what it says about them in Psalms 137, if you will. It said, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept. When we remembered Zion, we hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And, and they that wasted us required of us a mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, Oh, my right hand, forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy, remember, O oh Lord, the, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem who said, Raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. O oh, daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall ye be. That rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. We find here after 70 years of punishment uh, that they were allowed to return to their homeland uh, and God allowed them to rebuild the temple. That's called grace and that's called mercy. Aren't you glad for the mercy and the grace of God? So they got to work cleaning up the rubble from where the temple was torn down. Uh, and, and, for the, and the first thing they did was rebuild the altar so that they could offer God a daily sacrifice. I'm telling you, we need to consider our ways. Uh, we need to get back and start rebuilding the altars in our homes that have been torn down. Uh, we better think about it. God's hit this reset button, uh, and we need to hit our own reset button. Uh, by the next spring, they had finished the foundation of the temple. Uh, oh, they started out well. They was doing really, really Really good. Uh, then they ran into some problems. Uh, the problem was the devil got into the details. Uh, they became discouraged and then the work stopped. Can I tell you, when you get discouraged the work of God is going to stop. Uh, you cannot work with God and, and the things of God when you're totally discouraged. Uh, the people of God, uh, they got discouraged and they lost all heart for working on that temple rebuild. Uh, they, they became concerned about their own personal affairs. Uh, and for the next 14 years, uh, they put God's work on the back burner. Does that sound familiar? Uh, amen. Every pastor could say amen right there. Uh, the rebuilding of the temple should have been priority one. Verses 3 through 5 says uh, in our text, Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses? Uh, Oh, in this house lie wait. Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, uh, consider your ways. I was talking to Pastor Joey a little while ago, uh, and I was telling him about that word in, in sealed houses. That word sealed means expensive. Uh, God was saying here, we go home, and uh, we fix up our homes, we make them nice, the yard looks immaculate, the grass is green, uh, and everything's pretty. Uh, but what about the house of God? What about the condition of the house of God? we better consider our ways. We better get back to thinking of what God wants. This was the first evidence of spiritual apathy. As we, the body of Christ, are called to the rebuilding of his temple, we are called to win souls. We are called to go out into the highways and byways and compel them to come in. But are we doing that? I don't see much evidence of that. Oh, we listen. We, we talk about Romans 10. It says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And we love to quote that scripture. Whosoever. 
shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We preach it, we talk about it, we teach it in Sunday school, but look at verse 14 where it says, and how shall they hear without a preacher? If God wants to save people, and whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, but are they hearing it? Or are we getting out and telling them that Jesus has mercy and grace? Each one of us have a duty to be involved in the work of the kingdom of God. We have a duty to share the good news, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Church, we need to hit a reset button today. Uh, we, we need to consider our ways before this whole world was shut down about a month ago. Uh, I believe because of the mercy and the grace of God, he hit that reset button. Uh, I, I believe, uh, I thought about how he said he had never hit the, hit the world with a flood again. This wasn't a flood of water, but it, it's, a, it's a flood uh, of a, what the president called an invisible enemy. Uh, and it shut all the churches down. Uh, and, and I'm here to tell you, God is, is trying to get somebody's attention. The second evidence of spiritual apathy was and still is God's people became content. Oh, that's what I see now when I look out at the church today. We have become content. After their return to Jerusalem, they set up an altar in the middle of all that rubble. And after 14 years, they were still content with worshiping God in the midst of that rubble. God help us, church. I, I'm not content with an everyday ho-hum. I want to worship God in spirit and in truth. When I come into the house of God, I want to come into the house of God with grace and mercy on my mind. I want to come with praise on my lips. And then people come into the church today, they sit down and say, bless me if you can. I don't want that. It's time for us to consider our ways. Hit that reset button and say, God, I want to praise you through the hard times and through the good times. Well, when we don't see sinners getting saved and the church is okay with it, oh, I'm going to tell you something. We are backslid in our hearts. Amen. If we were really concerned about the souls that were lost, we would do something about it. We would go to all the world and we would preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even in our own lives, we, we become so content. That we have a hard time convincing ourselves that, that, that we even need to go to the house of God on Sunday morning. Oh, there's some that uh, you don't want to come on Sunday night or Wednesday night. I don't understand that. Uh, oh, this famine of not being in church is about to drive me crazy. I need to be in God's house. Uh, I come here most every day uh, and pray and, and, and seek the face of God. Uh, but I, I could not imagine not coming in here on Sunday morning and Sunday night uh, and Wednesday night to worship and praise God. Uh, I came this way to tell somebody uh, that you need to consider your ways. When God's people become content with things uh, as they are in the church, uh, amen, or in their personal life, uh, all the way, that, the way that they're going, it keeps going backwards and backwards and backwards, uh, and, and they don't have the love of God like they used to have. Uh, that's called spiritual apathy, and it's set in, uh, and we need to consider what's going on in our hearts and lives. Uh, the next uh, evidence of spiritual apathy is God's people started making excuses. Verse 2 says, the time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Again, the work of the temple was put on the back burner. Oh, I need to tell the church it's time for us to consider our ways. We can't put God's work on the back burner. God's work comes before our work. Oh, people make all kinds of excuses. Well, I've heard them from... I used to ride with a police friend of mine, and, and I've heard excuses why people were speeding. Uh, oh, so many excuses. And as a pastor, I've heard so many excuses. that I take the one excuse that drives me crazy, and, and I know a lot of people listening to me, but the one that really drives me crazy as a pastor is when they not come to church on Sunday morning and they slip in there on Sunday night uh, and, and you don't have to say nothing to them. I guess they feel guilty. Uh, they'll look at you and say, I couldn't come this morning because I had company. 
Company came over, uninvited. Uh, can I tell you something? Uh, my company knows uh, if they come to my house, it is time to go to the house of God. They either go into the house of God with me, or they're going to stay there, and I'll be back when I get back. Uh, excuses. A person that is content will always make excuses uh, to cover up their neglect. Uh, oh, Pastor, I, I, I would love to get more involved in the work of the Lord, but... I know that I need to get involved in those outreach ministries, but can I warn somebody, you better consider your ways. It's time for grace and mercy to be extended to us, and I'm glad for the mercy and the grace of God. You better take hold to it, but I wonder what God thinks about our excuses. I wonder what He thinks about our excuses. Pastor, I'm just waiting on the Lord to speak to me and let me know what He wants me to do. Really? He just shut the whole world down for over a month. If he didn't speak to you through all of that, God help us. God help us. Brothers and sisters, when God's work is neglected, when God's people get content with the status quo and make excuses for not doing his work, we need to look at ourselves. We need to get to that altar and say, Lord God, look at my heart. Shine that light on my heart. Oh, I need to find out what's going on. I've been putting your work on the back burner. I've been coming to church and saying, bless me if you can. I've been doing this and I've been doing that, but God's brought me this way to tell you, you need to consider your ways because grace and mercy just stepped in and it's given us another chance and I thank God for another chance. I told somebody the other day, I have hit the reset button myself. I'm going to start all over again. I want to please God with everything that's within me. This reminds me of the Laodicean church in the book of Revelation chapter 3. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye sand, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him. And he will be with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me at thy throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. Uh, reading this is like looking in a mirror and seeing our own faces in this unprecedented time that we're living in today. Uh, the church uh, as a whole has moved into a dangerous Laodicean age. Uh, the name Laodicea means uh, the rule of the people or the rights of of the people. And that's what it seems like the church is doing. Oh, don't tread on my rights. I, if I don't want to do it, I'm not going to do it. Well, you're a free moral agent. You can do it if you want to. Oh, God's not going to make you do it, but he's, he's given us mercy and he's given us grace and he's given us a place to repent. It speaks of a time, and I believe this is time when the church will become lovers of self and deny the one true God. Well, Pastor, I don't deny God. Uh, well, when you deny the work of God and deny doing the things of God, you're denying God himself. Church, Jesus had nothing good to say about this Laodicean church. That word lukewarm means without enthusiasm 
and without compassion. That's the way the church has been. You look five weeks, six weeks, seven weeks uh, ago, you'll see uh, that the church was slowing down. Uh, people wasn't getting saved like they used to get saved. People wasn't coming into the churches. Uh, our churches are not growing. There's something wrong when our churches aren't growing. Uh, there's something wrong when people aren't going out knocking on doors and telling people about the mercy and the grace of God. Uh, these unconcerned church folks can hear sermon after sermon and attend every service, uh, but they still don't have a sense of need to, to consider their ways. Pastor, I'm okay. I had somebody tell me not too long ago, I've got all of God I want. Uh, that's all of God you're going to get. Amen. Uh, they, they were self-centered. Uh, they were self-occupied and self-sufficient. Uh, they, they no longer had a zeal for the Word of God. Does that sound familiar? They completely compromised the things of God. Uh, but God sent me this way to warn His people uh, to consider your ways. He has hit a reset button in my opinion uh, and he wants us to hit that reset button and that reset button it just says mercy and grace. Uh, aren't you glad for the mercy and the grace of God? In closing as a pastor this unprecedented time reminds me of a verse that we preachers we like to use it a lot and we normally use it for condemnation if you will. But I believe today God wants to use this very familiar verse of Scripture to show His mercy and His grace. Here's the instructions for hitting God's reset button. You know it very well. 2 Chronicles 7.14 If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Oh, what grace and oh, what mercy. Listen, God said, if, there's that little big word again. He said it time and time again. If, if, if you would just consider your selfish ways and humble yourself. Oh, if you've been one of these that's, uh, that, that has falling into this spiritual apathy that I'm talking about. Uh, you know who you are. Uh, you know that the work of God has been put on the back burner and, and, and you don't even think about it anymore. Uh, you better humble yourself. Uh, he said, if my people which are called by not my name shall humble themselves, uh, you better be grateful and thankful for the grace of God and humble yourselves uh, and pray. In other words, in this scripture, he's saying that we need to humble ourselves and repent uh, and then and seek his face. Amen. Then stop your wicked living. And then and only then will he heal our land. He said, I will heal your land. I believe he's talking about in this situation. Not only will he heal our, our county, our country. Not only will he heal the world. But he will hear, heal our own souls. It's time we the church heed to the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. I believe if we take heed to 2 Chronicles 7, 14, here's what will happen. You'll go back to my text and begin reading. We stop reading verse 11. Here's what happened when the people obeyed the voice of the Lord. It says, start with verse 12. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shaphiel, and Joshua, the son of Jehoshaphat, Jehoshadak, that the high priest with all the remnant of the people, listen, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God in the words of Haggai the prophet, as the Lord their God had sent him, and the people did fear before the Lord. Then spake Haggai the Lord's messenger, and the Lord's messenger unto the people, saying, Listen, I am with you, saith the Lord, and the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel and the son of Shatiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jehoshadak, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people, and they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel. 
I pray to God that he will stir up our spirit this morning. I would to God that he would just get a hold of our hearts and show us how to humble ourselves before him and repent and turn from our wicked ways so we can have our soul healed. It's time, church. It's high time that the church wake out of their sleep. The reset button is before us. It's up to us to hit the reset button. We can leave it alone. You can leave it alone if you want to. But you just think about what's going on in our world today. It's not just in Putnam County or Duval County. It's all over this world. We are completely shut down. And I believe that God did this for a purpose. Maybe to get the church's attention. We need to wake out of our sleep. It's time to wake up and do the things that God would have us to do. Father... In the name of Jesus, I love you today. Most of all, I thank you for your grace and your mercy. Oh, you've been so merciful to us as a people. God, we've been so complacent. We've put your work on the back burner for so long that, that the, the church itself is in disrepair. Physically and spiritually in disrepair. The altars have not been worked on in years and, and they're in disrepair. This time that we, the church, we get on our knees and we get our hammer out. We get our tools out and we repair the altar of God. God, thank you for this time that we can reflect. Thank you for this time that we can, we can be at home and maybe be alone and just think about you. Thank you for those four hours that you spent with me laying in that bed. I thank you for speaking to my heart. I, I thank you, God, for talking to me, giving me instructions and, and lead me, guide me, direct me, Lord God. And I pray, Lord, that you'll do the same for every child of God. Shake us one more time. Help us to know and realize that you've hit the reset button. And all we've got to do is reach out and hit our own reset button. I want to do my first works over and help us to have the strength, the courage, to do it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful time in the Lord we've had today with this joint service between San Mateo and Middleburg Church of God. My dad preached a powerful message challenging us on the fact that it's time to reset. I heard somebody say the other day we can't afford to go back to normal. We've got to find that new normal of what God wants to do. And I believe God wants to do great things for each one of us. So as we close out this Sunday morning service time together, we want to thank you for tuning in. If you're a part of San Mateo, we want you to hit that like button for that page so you can stay up to date on everything that's going on there. Middleburg, do the same thing. Stay connected until we come back together again. We love you and we'll see you then.